All right, lovelies, if I was able to get my editing butt in gear, it is the eve of the launch of the Nomad Royal Europe palette. I know that there are many videos out on this palette already. I did get mine in the mail a little late, I am so sorry, but I am here to hopefully give you a video that is very helpful. I do have three looks, including the one that is on my face right now. I'm also gonna be doing some comparisons as far as formulas go with the multi-chromes because I know that a lot of people were like, oh, Nomad has a multi-chrome, I need to know more. I need some deets. Give me some comparison. So I'm here to do that for you. I hope that you do find this video helpful. So we are going to dive into the info on this palette, but if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real, real, honest, real, relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you don't miss out on future videos. All right, the palette, it was sent to me in PR. So thank you very much to the Nomad Cosmetics team. I'm excited to be able to to share this with you today and give you my thoughts and opinions, which of course are always honest, relatable, and hopefully fun. You'll have to tell me by the end of this video. So let's get into the deets of this palette. Now I'm sure you've all seen it, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but hello. Can we just talk about the beautiful texture, the beautiful layering of this palette? I think it is gorgeous. I think the color story, as always with Nomad, is gorgeous, stunning, beautiful. There really hasn't been a palette that I've seen from this brand that I haven't been like, wow, that is beautiful. The one that I will say is the Provence palette uh, wasn't necessarily my cup of tea because it's just not my aesthetic, but I could appreciate it as a palette. But every other one I'm like, ooh, ah, yes, give it to me. <laughs> have I purchased them all? No, but I have purchased quite a few. I do believe that I have four Nomad palettes that I purchased and two now that have been sent to me in PR. So just to keep it real with you so that you know. So thank you again to Nomad for adding me to the PR list. I really appreciate that. I'm excited to be able to share these palettes and share my thoughts on them with all of you. And you also are able to use my discount code, which is Keep Beauty Real. It is not affiliated, but it will save you 10% if you are choosing to shop the Nomad site. So the details on this palette, you have these 10 beautiful saturated mattes and five multi-chromes. Yes, that's right. Nomad is bringing us the multi-chromes. And of course, I will be diving into that for all of you. So this palette is $57. And I will say that while Nomad has been, I guess I would say, experimenting with having the singles available for purchase, for this launch, they are only offering the multi-chromes as singles for $12. I really tried to experiment with these multi-chromes to really give you my honest opinion about them. If you are not new to my channel, you will know that pretty much every single time I have enjoyed the Nomad mats every single time. Beautiful, rich, blendable, just lovely. It's the shimmers that I have had a on and off again relationship with. If you saw my Verona uh, Love and Death palette video, I did have a bit of a issue with those shimmers. So I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts on these as well. Now, I do just wanna say, I am going to make a note on this. When I saw, when I saw some of the details, you know, Nomad does the little sneak peeks of like what the theme is going to be. And as they started coming out, I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm seeing some hints and some sneaks and some of even the embossing. And I, I'll be honest, when I saw that they were doing a Royal Europe palette, I thought that that was a bit of a, a bit of a risky theme because of course there is a bit of controversy around royalty. I think, you know, a lot of us who maybe were not as educated as we would hope, or maybe not as aware as we would hope when uh, the death of the queen came about and a lot of people were outspoken about like, uh, we're not necessarily gonna be sad in this situation. And I have to say the culture of royal families and just royalty in general, monarchies, the success and the wealth and, you know, really the running of royalty has been built upon, traditionally, it has been built upon the backs and the lives of people who were taken advantage of. So it's a little bit risky in my opinion to be going down that road. I don't I don't necessarily think when I look at this palette and I look at some of the names, they're not celebrating anyone in particular. I don't even think this was meant to, you know, obviously celebrate the monarchy itself. This is really destinations, let's say, but you are still diving into a culture that is very controversial. So I'm just going to say that. So I really do understand that there are people who will automatically discount this palette and not be interested in it because of that. I would have loved seeing maybe um, a way to get this color story that wasn't 
so intertwined with actually like royal culture. That is all I'm gonna say on that because I don't necessarily think, A, I'm not educated enough, um, and I'm also, you know, it's not, it's not my place to say a lot of that. But I will say that I would like to see less controversial themes in the future. That is what I'm gonna say on that. Uh, I will also say that I have not watched any videos on this palette yet because I wanted to go into this with like my own thoughts and like blinders on. So it's been very hard <laughs> because several creators that I really enjoy, I know that they got their videos up already and I'm like, ah, I wanna see the looks they create, I wanna see what they think and I just haven't done it. So immediately after I'm done editing and uploading my video, I'm gonna be going and watching everyone else's videos. <laughs> So again, since I did get into this on the end of the like upload cycle for a lot of people, I went to Instagram, I went to my stories to make sure that I could answer questions for those of you that maybe hadn't gotten answers on them yet, or it was just something you were looking on my opinion on. So I will be addressing that. There's timestamps down below because I'm sure this is gonna be a long video. Let's go ahead and get into this right now. Right, so my whole goal in this is to do a pink and green look. So I think usually with a multi-chrome, I try to just stick with one on the lid just because then you really get to see the shift. But I think I'm going to try to combine uh, Royal Treasure and Royal Orb. So we should get a good little green and pink combo. And then of course, using some more of the mattes that I haven't used yet. And I did go ahead and just lay down a little bit of concealer. I'm going to go ahead and go through with a glitter glue for the multi-chrome. Uh, you'll see in the next two looks that I do one with a wet brush and one with a dry brush. So you can kind of see how these multi-chromes work, however you like to apply. I really wanted to, you know, give this, like I said, a good, a good little shot of testing so that hopefully this video that's going up a little later than a lot of other videos is still helpful to you. So this is the ballroom, which is that really like pink purple, if you will. It's beautiful color. And I think I'm going to put this in the front crease and on the front of my lid, just because this is gonna be where I place that uh, Royal Treasure shade. And I did notice um, with these black base multi-chromes when I was, you know, just kind of like playing around with the colors uh, in the swatches, in natural light, when they aren't hitting the light, they were very sheer looking. And so I don't wanna be able to see my lid color. So I'm just gonna like place a color down first. I totally just got a lot of fallout, but that is my fault because I didn't tap my brush off this last time when I went into the pen. I had a feeling I was gonna be getting a lot of fallout. <laughs> in this look. So I did not obviously put anything on. I actually don't even have my moisturizer on yet because I had a feeling I was gonna be using so much micellar water that I can just hydrate before I go through and do the rest of my makeup. Uh, these, these shadows are super pigmented, but they do have quite a bit of fallout. And now going through with King's Room and that is the deeper of the two teal shades. I'm just gonna pop this on the outside and I'm probably going to cover the lid as well. Once I have the general shape of that darker teal, I'm going back in with that ballroom shade and I'm just gonna blend where these two meet. I'm gonna end up with this sort of like plummy shade where the blue green and that, you know, kind of like purpley pink meet. I just wanna kind of get this a little bit blended, but I don't want it to be too murky. And then I'm gonna take the tiniest bit, tiniest bit of that Willano Palace, that's the lighter teal color, and I'm going to use that to blend right here. I don't know, if this were me creating this palette, I don't know that I would have done these two teal shades so close. I mean, on the finger here, they aren't that close. They do have some difference. You know, there's obviously a depth difference and this one just has more of like a white base to it as well. Like it's not just lighter, it's also has a bit brighter sense because of that white base. So the only thing, oh, by the way, in case you see this little spot here, I have to, I have to redo that spot because the teal got way too far over. I'm like, no, I'm taking over the pink. So I just have to go back and do that. But just my thoughts here. I, I don't know that I would have put two colors, 
quite so close together in this palette just because as you start blending out, they could get pretty similar. And actually, I think it would have been nice to have one more lighter color in this palette, like even if it was more of like a true green, like even like a Kelly green or something to give it I don't know, a little bit more color variation options. Just All right, well, I do have to say this side is a bit patchier than I would care for, but I did just wet it with my cellar water. I took off the concealer that was underneath. I just, I just don't feel like trying to perfect it. We're just gonna move on. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Once you get some multi-chromes and some mascara on here, it's all gonna be fine. So we're gonna throw down a glitter primer. I'm gonna use the Too Faced Glitter Glue. And then once I pop this on, I'm going to do, again, the Royal Orb more out here, and then just a little bit of that Royal Treasure on the inside, I think. So it's picking up on this flat shader really nicely. And I'm just kind of like tapping it onto that glitter glue. See, I love that combo of like chartreuse with pink. I just, I've always really liked that. This makes me very tempted to like not do that royal treasure on the inside, but we're just gonna do, like I said, a little, little bit. And then this color becomes almost that like emerald, almost tipping into a bit of like a tealy blue on the outside. I really like this. All right, I'm gonna take that same brush just because it worked so well. I cleaned it off. By the way, this is the Spectrum A16. It's again, just like a super, super, <laughs> flat, uh, densely packed synthetic brush. So now I'm gonna go through with that Royal Treasure shade. I think this is kind of a fun combo because it blends in with the, you know, greeny gold of Royal Orb, but then when I'm face front, it's more pink. So it's kind of like a good little color shift. Usually, like I said, if it's going to be a multi-chrome, I'm just going to use it all over the lid so I can really see the transformation of that shade, but that is okay. We are just trying to see what all of these look like. I think by the end of this video, you will get to see all but one of the multi-chromes, which isn't too bad. All right, I'm really liking the concept of this. It really miffs me <laughs> that I had to kind of like redo over here because it is so patchy and ugh, it's going to drive me nuts because I do plan on wearing this look all day so that I will be able to give you an update at the end as far as like wear time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up the shape and then I'm gonna put on the rest of my makeup. We will finish out the under eye and then you'll get to see the other two looks. All right, I'm back and you probably didn't even see it before but I had to change my shirt because I was like, yeah, this, this green was not going with this vibe. So we're nice and bright now. <laughs> And obviously I have all my makeup on. I'm going to try to remember to put details on this makeup, by the way, down below. Ooh, I feel like the sun's actually coming out here. So I feel like I'm getting a little bright. And now we get to finish up this eye look. So I think honestly, all I'm gonna do is take that pinky purple, that shade, the ballroom. I really like that shade. And I'm gonna run it underneath the lash line just to give this look, I mean, it right now it's predominantly green to me. So I just want to get a bit more of that pink underneath. And I have really tapped off this brush just to try to avoid any major fallout. And then I'm just wrapping around enough of that pink into my inner corner that I can lay an iridescent over the top. Uh, let's see, I've been using the Danessa Myricks Lightworks palette. The, which one is this? The volume three. So these ones right here, I'm gonna take the shade Strawberry Moon. This is like a pink iridescent. I think that'll be nice. And we will just pop that right on the inner corner, just for a bit of brightness. All right, I just zoomed you back in just so you could see the inner corner here. Um, not that it's a big deal because it's not part of this palette. That is the one thing in this palette. Obviously, there are no, there are no inner corner shades in here. Even if you used this shade right here because it does have that deeper base, when it's not in the light, it's going to look very, very dark. So I would think you'd have to be a really deep skin tone to be able to use that as an inner corner. That's just my opinion. So if you are someone who likes an inner corner, you want something bright, you are going to need to pull out a separate palette for that. Or, you know, use your highlighter for the day. But I feel like all of these shades are so jewel toned that I would want something that has a bit of color to it. You know, like I wouldn't want just a natural beigey highlight, maybe a gold highlight if you're using it that day with something that, you know, works with that. But I, I kind of like something with a little bit of color. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just pop on some mascara. I could really see doing this look with like some black eyeliner and some lashes. I think that would be awesome. I'm not gonna do that today. So I'm just gonna go pop on some mascara. I'll show you the close-ups, And again, you'll get to see those other two looks. And after those other looks, I will come back and give you my final thoughts on the palette. I'm going to let this look 
stay on for a while just so that we can see the longevity of this. Honestly, given my previous history with Nomad, I have a feeling it's going to last a very long time. I've never had a problem with longevity from these shadows, but we will see with the new multi-chrome formula. I will see you in just a minute. Okay, Lies, I did have to go ahead and throw on a lash. I just went and put on the Martini lashes from BK Beauty. You know, it's sort of like not a lash, but kind of a lash because it is a half lash. <laughs> How many times can I say lash? That's ridiculous. But here is the final look. All right, here with one finished look. I actually really like this. I, again, I'm just trying to get some combinations in here to be able to try out most of the shades. And you probably all know that blue and purple isn't something, those are shades that I don't normally wear all that often. So I thought I would like push myself out of my comfort zone and really, you know, go for it with this one, which I think I did. This is a beautiful, like blurple smoky eye. If you saw, I did go ahead and pull out one of those like soft multi-chrome iridescent shades from the Paradise Islands palette from Nomad, just because I really like to have something on the inner corner that's bright, especially when I've got like a very deep, dark smoky eye like this. So I did just toss on a coat of mascara and then a bit of blue liner into my waterline. I definitely feel like something this smoky just really needs something added into the waterline to like kind of tie it all in. So I really like this. Everything worked really well. I was really impressed with the Buckingham Palace shade. That is that deep purple. I did decide to go ahead and do it all over the lid and then layer that multi-chrome over the top. Purples, as you all know, can be very hard to formulate. They can get really patchy and I didn't find that at all with this. Uh, I did just go ahead and use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer as my base today. I am probably going to do a little bit of wetting the shadows, doing the multi-chrome dry like I did today, and then probably doing a glitter glue as well, just to kind of see how they all perform. This was just dry with a um, silicone applicator and it worked really well. It was kind of a mess. <laughs> it was kind of a mess, but that's just because, you know, when you're working with something dry, you are gonna get a bit of fallout and I would definitely do a look like this before I did my makeup anyway. So it's not really a big thing. Now, the one thing that I will say, which doesn't bother me too much, there was quite a bit of kick up in the pan when I was using my brush. It's kind of to be expected when you're using really pigmented shades. I think that they just tend to have that and it doesn't really bother me that much, but I honestly think that for me, after I'm done using this palette, I would probably just like tap it off into the garbage just so that the, you know, little bits of makeup shrapnel aren't like carrying over into other shades in the palette when I close it up and store it. So just wanted to give you that. Um, I personally, I don't really have a problem with that that much. They're not like, as extreme as let's say, I know recently I just talked about the Dandelions Co. mattes in my BYOP video and how those are lovely. They blend out so beautifully, but they are very, very powdery and kick up in the pan a lot. This isn't quite to that level, but it is probably some of the most kick up I've had from a Nomad formula, but they're performing beautifully, so that is fine. All right, let's do another look. So for this look, I'm gonna try to pair some colors that I don't think a lot of people would necessarily do in this palette, and I'm gonna try to have fun with it. So I think we're gonna go in with Imperial Crown, which is this, you know, sort of like goldy, warm, shifty shade, and then also do the blue. I think like golden blue, it's just that like contrast that can really look fun. And then I'm probably gonna round it out with this neutral shade, this Neptune Fountain. This is more of like a gray, almost like olive leaning brown, 
down. And I think that that will just kind of like take those two contrasting shades and just really like bring it home. We might pull in some other shades. I'm not really sure, but um, I'm really excited to try this out. It might look ridiculous, but I think it's gonna look kind of fun. Here we have the second look. I actually really like this combination. Both of these eye looks are very dramatic. I think at this point you know that pretty much every look you're gonna get out of this palette is going to be fairly dramatic, I think. There are a couple shades in here that you could get something softer out of, but most of it is going to be dramatic. So I actually really like this. I had no problems at all with the shade, with this multi-chrome shade, Imperial Crown. I just wet my brush with Fix Plus and it went on gorgeously. Is that a word? It went on gorgeously. We're, we're gonna make that one a word. I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy with this. Honestly, these mattes are applying beautifully. I do think that this formula is something that, you know, you can pack in for that really bold, like very true to tone experience, or you can just take your brush and, you know, with a few whisks, you can really blur it out into something a little bit softer. I did have a bit of, trouble right here where I had a uh, Neptune Fountain meeting Hall of Mirrors. It was like, I wanted it blurred out a little bit more, but I could really see the, you know, the spot where those two shades met and I was kind of having a hard time. It was like blending away and not really blending together, if that makes sense. So I was able to just pack it on a little bit more and then just like, I feel like with this formula, if you whisk your brush too much, you're gonna kind of like, really dissipate the shadow that you put down. It's just so soft, but I didn't have a problem once I finally was able to like pack it on and then just get a little and we were good to go. So uh, for my inner corner, I did pull out my Danessa Myrick's Lightwork Volume 3 and then put on this Spring Equinox shade because again, I want a shimmery light inner corner. Okay, so now you've gotten to see three looks if I've done this right. I hope you're okay with me not putting on any other makeup. Honestly, it's Sunday. I am just sitting here at home trying to get some stuff done, you know, laundry, all that kind of stuff. And I just, I just don't feel like putting on a full face makeup. <laughs> You're able to really get the effect anyway. So I think it's fine. You're here for the eyeshadow, right? And I'm sure in the first look that I showed you, it was a full face of makeup. So now we're going to get into some comparison swatches. I did ask on my Instagram if there was anything that people were kind of curious about. Some people wanted some comparisons. So I'm going to show you some shade comparisons uh, before I get into my final thoughts. So let's do that right now. By the way, if you do want to be in the know and be able to ask questions that you want to see in reviews, make sure you're following me over on Instagram at Keep Beauty Real. All right, I have an arm full of swatches here and hopefully I can keep track of all these. So I just wanted to go through and swatch some of the shades from, of course, the Royal Europe palette and then some of the other palettes that I have. Now, the palettes that I'm gonna bring out to compare with you, the ones that I have here, I have five altogether. These four I have purchased. I also have the Verona Love and Death palette and I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think that there's gonna be many shades similar in there anyway, so we're not gonna be comparing that one. So we have Hudson Valley. This 
there's really not a lot that's similar. There's one, this one brown shade that I'll be showing you here is kind of similar-ish, but not really. So this is definitely a very different color story. I did have some people wanting to know um, how the teals and blues in this palette compare. This is Paradise Islands. We'll be going over that as well. And then we have Nomad uh, Snow Lodge. This is the Whistler palette. And of course we have a couple blues in here, a couple greens, and then also America's Parks, which is this one right here. So in case you, aren't familiar with many of the Nomad palettes. These are the ones that I have to compare with you today. And again, I have purchased all of these others. This one, of course, again, was sent to me in PR. So let's go ahead and take a peek here. I'm gonna try to open all these up so that I can like keep track of my life. All right, so this is Dolphin from the Paradise Islands palette, and this is Versailles from the Royal Europe palette. Here we have Stingray from the Paradise Islands palette. I did want to pull in this one from the America's Parks palette. This is Blue Ridge Parkway. So you can see this is a lot more leaning into like a dusky green color as opposed to like a teal. Then here we have the two deeper teals from the Royal Europe palette. That is Willano Palace and King's Room. So I did want to show this one from Whistler Snow Lodge. That is bucking great. So it's definitely a deeper, hazier, like forest green. This here is Hall of Mirrors from Royal Europe. You can see it's definitely, it's like, a blue and a teal together. It definitely isn't a true blue because you can see a true like royal blue here in Snowmad from Whistler Snow Lodge. All right, so now let's go into these browns. This is Half Dome from America's Parks. Then here you have Gone Skiing from Whistler Snow Lodge. And then this one is the one in Royal Europe. This is Neptune's Fountain. And then this is one from Hudson Valley. Sorry, I decided, oh, I should probably pull that one out. And that is Farm to Table. So I feel like these are all a bit different. Uh, if I'm looking here, I do feel like the one that is the closest would be Farm to Table, but it's still, sorry, just trying to get a good angle here. I feel like the one, first of all, I honestly have to say that I feel like all of the mattes in the newest palette, the Royal Europe palette, are much more saturated. They're much more pigmented and they have even a more silky feel. Now that could be that it's a brand new palette because I think like America's Parks at this point is like gonna be two years old this summer. Oh my gosh, I don't even know, but they definitely have a much more satiny feel to them. So that could be it as well. Just a little bit of a formula difference, but I do, I mean, you can just see like this one is much more pigmented, whereas this one is just like, it's just a little lighter in color. I did also just realize as I was going through, we have the two kind of like mustardy shades. Let me go ahead and pull the one out from uh, Hudson Valley. That is Great Pumpkin Patch. And then we have the one uh, from Royal Europe, which is Schönbrunn Palace. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So I'm gonna just swatch both of these. So they are a bit different. The one in uh, Hudson Valley is warmer. It's got a bit more of like an orangey cast to it. Whereas this one really is more of like a camel color, like almost like a caramel tone. So hopefully that gives you some comparisons as far as the tones. I, you know, I really don't feel like looking at these, I mean, it's sort of like having 10 pairs of black heels, right? Like they all are a little bit different, but I don't feel like there's anything that's a dead ringer for the shades that are in this palette. And like I said, the formula to me is also just a bit more saturated. So I don't, I don't really see anything that I'm like, eh, if you have that and you're already using that, you don't need these colors. I mean, you don't need any of them. It's just eyeshadow after all, but I do feel like there's a bit more of a difference. You can see, you know, the ones from uh, Paradise Islands are definitely like lighter and have that more like almost pastel pop. Whereas the ones in Royal Europe are definitely more of those like jewel tones. So that's, that's what I would have to say, but you can let me know in the comments down below what you think. So for those of you that were hoping for some comparisons to other pre-existing Nomad palettes. I just wanted to give you those swatches. Hopefully that was helpful. So now let's go ahead and skip back to Kelly with a full face of makeup and the first look that you got to see in this video. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts, tell you who I think this palette is great for, maybe who it isn't really gonna be perfect for. And of course, we're gonna talk about the multi-chrome formula and compare it to a couple other brands. All right, hopefully you have all enjoyed those three looks. So we are gonna dive into some comparisons here as far as formula goes with these multi-chrome. I know that everybody was kind of wondering my thoughts on how these compare to other multi-chrome. So we're gonna go ahead and swatch some. Now, these first swatches that I'm gonna show you are actually a color match or a color dupe, I would say, but 
that was really just so I could show you an opacity and textural difference because I do think that's a great way to be able to show that when it's a color that's very similar. But I will also be swatching a couple that aren't by any means uh, a dupe, but it's really just to show you the formulation of the shadows, if you will. So enough of that. Let me show you these three here. So as you can see here, we do have very, uh, very similar shades. I'm going to go ahead and bump down this light right here just so that you can see. Now, all three of these swatches, I gave two passes. So I ran my finger in the pan and ran it over the swatch twice. So this top one is Royal Treasure. That is the shade that's on my inner part of my lid. This one right here, oh, by the way, that's obviously Nomad Cosmetics. This one here is Divina Cosmetics Australis or Australis. And then this here is is Terra Moon's Head Rush. And you can see these are almost dead ringers for each other as far as the shift goes, but you can also see the opacity level is very different on these. Nomad Cosmetics definitely has a much more sheer look to it. And I think that's because the base on this is really less black, if you will. It is more... <sighs> It's more, less black. It really has a bit of almost, I would say, more of a gray base or a sheer black base, whereas the others are definitely more of that opaque base. Now, that could be a positive, it could also be a negative. I shared with you the fact that I felt like on my palm swatches, when these shades in the Nomad Cosmetics palette, when they hit the light, they looked, you know, a little bit sheer because they are a little bit sheer. So. That could be a good thing if that's the way you like to wear a multi-chrome. It could also mean that you're really gonna have to pack on more to get a really substantial look. I did find that when I wet my brush or when I used a glitter glue, it was not a problem at all, but uh, I did feel like in that blurple look that I did that that shade, let me go through, uh, St. Edward's Crown, I did want to layer on more of that when I was just using it with a dry brush. So. You have options here, but that does also mean you're gonna have to do just a little bit more work to get as opaque coverage as this. Now, as far as looking at the textural quality, I feel like they look on the skin very similar. I do think that both of these shades from Divina Cosmetics and Terra Moons have a little bit more of that slippy feel. They're all very smooth feeling, but the Terra Moons and the Divina have a little bit more glide to them, if you will. And that could just be because it has more base to it. So now I'm gonna show you in comparison to a couple others. Uh, these are not by any means color match, but it'll give us a formula reference. All right, I just realized that I wasn't all the way zoomed in before, so I just wanted to give you a closer look at those first three. Again, Nomad, Divina, and Terra Moon. So here we have one of the new Odin's Eye uh, multi-chromes, obviously nowhere near the same color, but this to me has much more of that emollient slippy feel. It's a little bit of that squishy feel that almost, I don't wanna say oily, but it has that moist feel to it. So this to me is definitely going to probably crease on people with crease prone lids more, uh, oily lids as well. And I feel the same about this. This is of course Lucid Lavender from Touch of Glam. These have a very similar formula in my opinion here, and you almost can't even see it. <laughs> this is the shade, this is the shade Bizarre, I believe, by Shine by SD. I'm gonna try to see, oh, you can't even, it's just not even showing right now. Maybe there, you can kind of see it. But this has a very similar feel to the Nomad Cosmetics. It's, it's really almost identical. Maybe this is almost a little bit more dry, honestly. That's how I felt. So uh, I do think that these have a very similar feel and honestly, a very similar opacity. Uh, and if you know how I felt about those initially, I wasn't super impressed. Uh, this one down here is a Cleona shade. Which one is this? You probably all know. You probably all know if you have a lot of Cleona shades. Let's see, this is a really close one to the top three, but it isn't the same. It's Forge, very well-known one. So that is Forge from Cleona. This one actually might be a close dupe for these. I probably should have paired these all together. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> I'll probably show it on Instagram. But uh, this one definitely has more of a feel similar to these two. It's that silky feel, that slippy, but not wet feel and not a squishy formula and it glides on really easily. Okay, so hopefully that little tiny swatch party helped you if you already have some of these formulas, if you know you like one of those companies' formulas and you're curious how they compare. I really do think that the base is a bit more iridescent and the shadow just isn't quite as opaque, which again, could be a pro or a con, depending on what you're looking for. I will also say that all of these shades in the Nomad palette have 
multi-chrome shift. They might be a bit softer shift, but they have a multi-chrome shift with no sparkle, no glitter, no texture to them. So some of the other companies like Terra Moons, also I believe Shine by SD, and of course Divina Cosmetics, they all are known for also doing shifty and sparkly shades, and these don't have any sparkle to them. So if you are not a sparkle fan, you will like the ones in the palette. Now, before I get into my final thoughts, who I think would be a real lover of this palette and who I think might wanna pass on this palette, I do just wanna let you know, I've had this look on for at least four, four to five hours, and I really like it, and it's lasted really well. I've never had a problem with Nomad longevity, and I do wanna say, while I had a problem with fallout during the application, I've gotten almost nothing. In fact, I think not just almost nothing, but nothing. Yeah, I don't think I see anything. Maybe a little bit for my mascara, but that's not the eyeshadows problem. <laughs> So I really do think that this is a long lasting, long wear palette. And I do also wanna say that when I did swatches, my fingers got terribly stained, terribly, terribly stained. But the other looks that I did when I was in the shower, I used an oil cleanser and my normal everyday cleanser and I had no problem. I didn't have any staining left over from these shades, which is amazing considering that uh, the pigmentation is real. All right, so final thoughts on this palette. Again, this entire palette is $57, and you can also purchase the singles as far as the multi-chromes go this time. None of the mattes, but you can purchase the multi-chromes for $12 a piece. So obviously, if you were interested in getting all of the multi-chromes, I would just buy the palette, unless you like love singles that much that you just want the singles, but you're basically paying more for just the singles of the multi-chromes than you are for the entire palette itself, and you get the beautiful packaging. That's what I would do. So who should maybe purchase these multi-chromes as singles? Someone who just wants one or two shades, someone who doesn't have these shades in other formulas, or maybe you've tried another formula that has that silkier texture and you're looking for something that might have a bit more longevity. Maybe you're looking for a multi-chrome that is slightly more sheer, that maybe isn't quite so opaque. Personally, I love all the bang, but not that, I, not that I didn't get that from this. I really think when I wet my brush and when I used a glitter glue, I really had no problems. They really performed quite beautifully. So no problems there. I don't have any complaints as far as the performance of these. I do think that I will always personally put these over the top of a base shade, and I know then that I won't have any problems with opacity. So the palette itself. Here's what I will say. I do think that the color story is very beautiful. If you love deep, dark, jewel tones, if you really enjoy that very saturated look, I do think that you are going to get a very dramatic look as far as like the colors in it every single time you wear this. There really isn't a soft look in this palette. I mean, yes, you could maybe take uh, the shade here or this blue or even this and blur it out more, but I do think just with the tones in this palette, you are going to get a fairly intense slash vibrant look every single time you use this palette. And because there aren't really a lot of like lighter transition shades, there isn't that option to have something that sort of like blends and blurs out very softly, in my opinion. I keep saying in my opinion because this is all my opinion. Maybe I can stop saying that now. <laughs> okay, so I do think that for me, I will really enjoy bringing in a companion palette for this with some softer shades. I mean, even bringing in like, I mean, right now I could, I've got this sitting here. I've got the Blend Bunny Blends palette sitting here. I could see really enjoying pulling in some of these lighter shades to really help get a bit of a softer look to go with some of the more intense jewel shades. That's, that's just me and I don't have a problem if I've got something sitting out here to use with this palette. But this is already a fairly big palette. So the only time I would ever be traveling with this is if I was just ready to go like deep and dark and like hit it home with the pigment every single time. So that's one thing to consider. I had zero problems with the performance of any of these shades. I will say if you are someone who you are a bit more heavy handed, uh, this might be a bit of a challenging palette for you because they blend out and they just keep going. It's like going, going. I mean, I felt like, oop, I got a little bit higher than what I was looking for in this look. And I really had to go back through with like a clean fluffy brush to sort of blur that out a little bit. Because these are so intensely pigmented, I think that a little goes a very long way. So if you're someone who like, you just like go for it, you might end up, you might end up having eyeshadow up to the hairline. But that also means that a little goes a really long way and these really do pack a punch. So if you just can't seem to get enough color, if you're always looking for richer, deeper tones, you're really gonna like this. 
So I hope I hope that that helps. I kind of went back and forth all over the place. So if you love jewel tones, if you love really deep, intense tones, if you don't necessarily need lighter tones to sort of give a softer feel to your rich looks, then you will really love this palette. If you are looking for the most intense multi-chromes, if you're looking for something that has super extra shift, if you are someone who probably already has these tones in your collection, or if you're someone who obviously just doesn't love this color story, those are the people that I think should maybe avoid this palette. That kind of sums it up. I do really think that this does have a very beautiful packaging. The color story itself is to die for. Nomad always does a very great job with that, in my opinion. Do I see the theme behind this palette a little bit troublesome? Yes, I am. I am a little bit surprised that the brand went with something like royalty just because there is a lot of controversy understood. Like it, it, it's understandable why around royalty. And it's not as if they are necessarily celebrating people within monarchy, people within royal status, but there is the celebration of the culture of the landmarks that have to do with that. So I completely understand for people who will choose not to purchase this palette because of that reason, I do understand that. So I just wanna make a note of that. I do think it is a bit risky when the brand has started to lean into uh, palettes that maybe celebrate a culture instead of just nature, you know, or like a place in general. So those are, those are waters that are very hard to tread into. I do also know that I believe that the brand owners have a very inclusive, kind heart and, you know, probably weren't meaning any harm. Whether there is harm there, that's another story. I do think that, I do think that Nomad is a brand with a conscience, more so than a lot of other brands out there. You know, they are very environmentally conscientious. They do always have an organization that they are benefiting through part of the proceeds of their sales. Again, the one for this palette is the UNESCO World Heritage Center. So I'm going into this as a consumer, keeping that in mind. But I do hope going forward that we do see maybe less cultural references and maybe just more like location references. That's a, again, I'm, in this case, I'm glad I'm not a brand owner because it's, it's again, it's a, it's a hard line to tread. Okay, I do hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope if you are considering purchasing this palette that my information, my looks, my comparisons really did help you out. Uh, again, if you do want to purchase this palette, you could use my code KEEPBEAUTYREAL. It is not affiliated. I don't earn anything from it, but you do save 10%. I wanna thank you for taking some time out of your day. I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be a short video, so thank you. If you stuck it to through the end, again, thank you to Nomad for sending this over in PR. I do really appreciate it. Now, if you have any questions about this palette that I didn't address, please go Go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I will be trying to answer them as quickly as possible because I know that some of you are looking to purchase this palette. Although I will say, I feel like Nomad does a very good job at having a good stock of a product. They aren't that brand that tends to like have, you know, palettes available for like a day, a day and a half, and then they're like gone. And then everybody's waiting for another like two months for a restock. So I don't think this is necessarily something that you have to like, you know, add to cart within like the first hour of launch. Now I'm not, that's not like purchasing advice because if it does sell out, I don't want you to be mad at me, but I do appreciate that they seem to always be prepared in advance for these launches. But again, if you do have any questions, leave them down below, I will get back to you. And that is gonna be it for today, lovelies. I will see you really soon.